I want your balloon pole. Where'd you get that? <laughs> Amazon. Hi, this is Brown's Outdoor Service. <laughs> This is pretty common. Lindsay has to hop in back and feed the newest child. Freaking out. Mason's screaming. Angelo wants a donut. Angelo wants a donut. Here's little Lindsay girl. Yeah. All fed. She's happy now. Hi, I'm Lindsay Brown. And I'm Angelo Brown. And we're just gonna be sharing a little bit about the past four years in our process and being honest, showing the good, the bad, and answering some questions that you've asked us. But first we'll go into detail about everything that we've done in the past four years, which is a lot. So we'll try to condense it a little bit. But I met Ange while he was a police officer in Detroit. He got mandatory there. Yeah. And then he got transferred into Flint, Michigan. So he was working in the most dangerous areas in the United States. And I got married to him when we were just doing that. And we decided to start a lawn care service. And uh, that was kind of the beginning of, of our time of getting out of a nine to five job, if you wanna call police work that. Uh, we, we really knew that we wanted to pursue business uh, for ourselves and our family as well. And um, so we decided to start a lawn care business uh, hired two full-time employees. I was still working full-time and uh, Doing a massive commute for having a side business and yeah. that wasn't really common. I don't think it did. Yeah that? I don't I don't know if a lot of police officers can handle side businesses there. There's a lot of, a lot of weight on on law enforcement as a whole and it's really hard to step outside of that especially if you're working midnights or anything like that so um, it was tough in the beginning. We persevered through it and our, our employees handled a lot of it, but uh, it was still a lot of work. And we did have a plan in our head the whole time to slowly get out of law enforcement, uh, to pursue business, pursue a, a more normal lifestyle. And I was actually pregnant at the time of all of this. So we got married, we had a honeymoon baby and he's a police officer and then we have a landscape business so we had a lot going on already and then he sat me down one day and just showed me this really sketchy apartment complex that looked really historical and run down and he said he wanted to go into the real estate game and i felt really good about it and the thing i didn't feel really good about was doing three things and for him it's very easy for him to adapt and change and he can handle a lot. I can't. I feel a little bit more fragile in that area and not so quick to just jump on board with things. 
with that I think we balance each other out very well because it's very extreme I would say both ways um, so then we started doing three things which law enforcement like from a wife's perspective is already like very difficult to deal with especially when he's doing midnights and he's worked in such dangerous areas and then we were doing three things so it was a lot and I think for like a, probably a year we got to a point where when I met him he wanted to eventually quit law enforcement because he's always had the entrepreneurship in his blood but it took several years to actually get to the point where we could quit and then we did in 2020 and then that was the year that everybody started really turning their backs on law enforcement and it was really sad but I think it made it easier a little bit easier to quit what do you yeah it yeah it did make it easier to quit um you know 2020 was a a, a big change for law enforcement um there's bad apples in every profession and law enforcement is not an exception um so we we decided to move on from that uh, lifestyle and it's it's been great it's been less stressful in ways but more stressful in others um being business owners has been tough uh you know we have three children under three years old and i'm not home a lot right now that's just the phase that we're in and i feel like we took on a new baby every business <laughs> yeah and it hasn't there's been no uh just steadiness at all we've always came up with something new since since we met each other and we are looking forward to some some just normal years and you know we're not at that point right now we are we are building just like any other new business owner um we don't have it all figured out yeah which brings us into our why and i think just this channel in general of how we even like why we even started to go so fast so quickly and i think that's a subject where Ange is really misunderstood and our family is very misunderstood because we appear really crazy and i think out of control and reckless with our family which i can have i think we both understand why people would think that and think that we're crazy but the moment that i got pregnant with our almost three-year-old we both had it in our hearts to simplify our life and we thought of two options we could either steadily have a nine to five where he's working at a desk for an example and have a scheduled time for our family or we could accelerate very quickly and build really hard and sacrifice a lot for a couple of years when the kids are young and then have a lot of time where we're not tied down to things we can go on vacations and it's way more on our demand than somebody telling him what our schedule looks like yeah i think it, um if there's two different ways of thinking about it and we've collectively uh went with the first as far as doing all the work in the front end and it takes a lot of sacrifice um we are missing vacations you know you can jump on social media and, and see everyone right now during during winter time is heading south uh, especially people from michigan and we're not we are working we're snow plowing uh we are keeping our employees busy uh, we are, we're in the middle of building a new house right now and it, we are busy and we haven't not been busy since we met and we are looking forward to it but we do like the idea of getting big steps out of the way while the kids are young and while we're, we're new in our relationship as well um, and we're constantly growing. Uh, for the first time ever we set a date night every single week, one, one day a week um, we've never even done that before. Uh, it's always just been play it by ear and when we have time, we have time. But we are trying and we're not perfect and I think this is what's so great about this journey. The, the young kids is, is another big stressor and you want to provide all the opportunities and things like that. But you also want to share memories with them. So it's a very, it's, it's a very fine line of working too much and... It's very conflicting. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely not a pity story and I think I want to emphasize that on this whole video that entrepreneurship I think is very glamorized that it has a stigma attached to it that you're, you're free you can work in your pajamas at home it's 2 30 in the morning and just about to go snowplow 
on his 30th birthday. How do you feel? I feel good. <laughs> that is so far from the truth and it's very challenging, but there's been so many good things that have came from this and we wouldn't have been able to buy our dream property or Ange for him to quit his job and even though it's been really challenging and really stressful, the reward that's gonna take place in a couple of years is gonna be, we're gonna look back and be like, we're so happy we did it. But it's very easy to compare right now and I think that we've gotten pretty good at that. That even though people are going on vacations, I think we're just like eyes on the prize, like our year will come. Which brings me to now we're gonna be doing the Q&A and I have questions on my phone from Instagram. And the first question is, what's your toughest struggle currently with your journey and the best part of it? So what's the toughest? The toughest is making time for everybody, uh, you know, as far as the kids and Lindsay. Um, we are right in the middle of it and it's very hard to cut your day short when there's so many things to do. There's you have to point your employees in the right directions every day. You're trying to set systems in place, but you have to juggle everything and um, give attention where it's needed. So time management is, hu is huge and still creating memories while we're so busy. Um, it's been, that's been a big struggle for us. The best part, I think, is the memories in it. So I think it just goes hand in hand that like we're gonna look back and we're in a small little house right now with five of us and we're building a barn dominium and even though it's kind of like a tornado around us, there is such sweet memories that we're gonna look back and cherish these moments. Question number two, what's the best advice you've ever been given? Mine would be, my dad sat us down and he talked about how it's okay to be in chaos sometimes, but it's not okay to camp there and to, to essentially live there. And I think that we both have that mindset that we don't want to live in chaos but definitely right now it feels like we're walking down chaos lane or something <laughs> like it's hard but to remind ourselves that like this isn't a state of life for us that we will we will be making a way out of this like we aren't just going to be staying yeah we do have a plan mm -hmm. and we talk about the plan all the time and we might talk about it too much yeah uh we we do have a plan out of this and uh, it's always a good thing it, we're always thrilled when we see couples our age doing the same thing uh, where they're making the sacrifices now for a better future and yeah and if that's not for you that is yeah. yeah I think that this whole I think it's rare for us to see people that are our age with this many kids doing similar things to us again this channel is to inspire and to motivate people that like you can do it with kids and risk taking is very good and even though the risk taking might look different it may not be in a business sense risk taking in general i think is something i've learned a lot from him that i feel like it's very essential and which that goes into the whole without conflict there's no conflict resolution without conflict resolution there's no change and i feel like that has been the biggest thing in four years time is that we've evolved and we're going to keep evolving in our relationship and we're just going to be stronger and stronger and when we were first married i see a very fragile and secure relationship which we were normal we were newlyweds but we have just actively made decisions to grow our relationship and even though we're definitely not perfect and we still argue and we have our disagreements we are so much stronger than we were. Advice for wanting to take the jump. Question number three. I actually get asked this a lot and it's by a lot of uh, current police officers that sadly want out of the profession as well. Um, I would say just be prepared. There's, It's always great when someone takes a huge leap and really doesn't have a, have a parachute plan on, on the way down. Um, I, I give them a lot of credit, but I think in today's age, you do have to be prepared. Um, we started two businesses while I was a full-time nine to five person. Um, and those were some dark times for us. They were very stressful, but it was needed. 
Um, especially when you have children, anyone watching that has children, especially if you're the provider of the family, if um, you, you take on that role, um, it's not, it's, it's much different now. You have a lot more chips in and a lot more skin in the game when you have children and a wife and a house. Um, I'm all about taking huge, huge leaps and uh, taking big risks uh, for a big reward. But there's nothing wrong with starting your side hustle when you're in a job that you don't like um, and building that side hustle to where it's paying the bills and, and more. We, we were running a, a business um, for the last three years of me being a police officer just to prepare financially. So that's a big thing. I, I think you do have to be safe, but we all we always like seeing people taking huge risks. I think it's it's exciting for us to see other people doing that. What would you say to somebody that is scared to make to be uncomfortable with that? Because I think that's yeah. that's I think people get paralyzed with they can't even comprehend yeah. the first step. Yeah, and we and we still do that right now. Um, you know, if we're analyzing real estate deals or anything. Uh, there is such thing as analysis paralysis. I, I think it's important to go to people that you trust will give you honest feedback and they're they're for you and not going to people that suck the life out of you and they're almost like manifesting their own depression upon your life, you know? And it's I think that is also brings me back to what my dad told us with burn the ships and that was something where we could not make decisions in the beginning of this. Like yeah. it was so hard to make a decision. We were I think very we were, fearful. Yeah. yeah, we were going to so many different people and we were hearing different different things. Like we're very much, the Lord is in every single conversation that we have with this stuff. So I would say, if anything, don't listen to anybody and just go to the Lord. But if you have those people in your life that you trust and are for you, go to those people and i i know Ange had a couple police officer friends that were very encouraging and helped him make that leap and so surround yourself with people that are going to push you and if you see red flags like don't avoid them don't shy your face away from them but if you feel peace in your heart just trust and like go into a different feeling that you've never experienced before and it's going to be okay what does your day to day look like Question number four. Um, my day to day, I leave super early in the morning. I wake up before uh, Lindsay and the kids, unless Lindsay's up all night with a newborn. But I usually leave before everyone's up, and I usually go to a home improvement store and fill a trailer full of building materials. And they know them by name. Go to a property <laughs> and uh, start my day off that way, and. Um, there's always different things going on in the lawn care business. If someone's sick or they don't come in, then I'm jumping on a lawnmower. Um, if that side of the business is doing okay, then I'll be in a house building. I'm out on the road all day and I usually come home five, six at night when the kids have about a half hour left before they go to bed. Um, and Lindsay's been dealing with all of them all day and yeah, and then mm -hmm. we share stories and have a have an hour or two together and or in bed yep so it's not very glamorous at this point no <laughs> question number five is marriage marriage advice for difficult times um marriage advice for difficult times comparison's a killer i would say that in everybody's relationship comparison's a killer and so if you're in a hard time i think it's very easy to just scan your eyes and see people living a simple life in social media and just how toxic that can be it can be a really good thing but i just think it's not great for marriages and if we've learned anything we've just learned that nobody's perfect no relationship is perfect and we go on our merry way um also being intentional with our time which brings us back to what Angie's idea was to do the dates every wednesday and a couple days ago we just sat down and we just talked about how we could do little acts every single day where we wouldn't be out so out of control feeling like we could bring in the reins a little bit with like no phones in bed super simple things that work in a really powerful way for our home and i think that is huge in a relationship that 
you bring yourself back to what's really important and that's your family that's the lord like and what do you de need to do to prioritize that better even if things are super crazy there's always a little slack that could be given in i think is this question number six i'm losing count do you have any regrets things you would have done differently during your grind no i think i think everything has happened for a reason for us um I think my background, uh, I, I grew up in family businesses. Uh, I, I think that laid a foundation for a good work ethic. Um, I think that made the entry into being a police officer uh, that much easier and, um, and it helped me adapt well to places that I was not accustomed to at all. Um, then that framework, it, 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 laid, it laid a good foundation um, from being a police officer to managing businesses and owning businesses and, and building teams. Um, so I wouldn't regret anything. I don't think we've lost any time. Uh, I think the one thing that we will regret at, at some point in our life is the time that um, was taken from building building our businesses and uh, the time that it took away from the kids. Um, but hopefully the, the benefits far outweigh those feelings of we lost time mm -hmm. um, you know setting up generational businesses that's always it's been huge for me um, and I know it's big for big for Lindsay too it's big for our family and uh, that's what we're we're going towards and personally I I think my role in some of these videos will be showing how how working hard uh, for for a better future is extremely beneficial and uh, you can do it in a healthy way and you can have a family you don't have to wait on having kids right away um, we're, we had kids right away um, you know we know plenty of couples that are waiting to get life out of the way before they have kids and um, we want to share it with them and we want to build something for them and that's what we're doing we're going full force ahead and uh, it's full throttle every single day it seems like um, we could probably back off a little bit but it's it's hard for us sometimes when uh, we're right in the right in the middle of it so just there's a lot of positives that come from this type of lifestyle and it definitely is not for everyone I don't think a lot of families could carry the weight of this like it just wouldn't be good and I feel like our personality types can handle it yeah I think pe some people feel bad for us and um, because we're honest, I think. Yeah, and we are, you know, we're not living a, a completely glamorous life. I mean, Lindsay drives a paid-off <laughs> car that's been paid off for years and years. I'm driving a single cab pickup truck that's borrowed from my dad, and I can't even carry my kids in <laughs> that truck. We're in my parents' yeah. little cottage right now. <laughs> so we're we're trying to figure out life too, but we're we're doing it frugally and. Um, we are looking towards the future and no one has to feel bad for us and we're super excited about it and we're on fire about uh, building teams and um, and supporting one another through it and uh, creating a good lifestyle for our kids as well and something that they can enter into if they'd like to um, when, when they're in their later years and uh, that brings us a lot of joy and we're excited to share it. Yeah, so hopefully this encourages you. If you're single, you have kids, whoever you are, if you're 50 or 60, like you have it in you to have a beautiful life. And if you're at home and there's any like thought in your mind of like wanting something more for you, there's nothing wrong with you. Like you could do that. Just obviously sit your family down if you have a family and try to get on the same page. But it's, there's, there's more for a lot of people and they're just, not wanting to access it um but if you're happy where you are with your job and with your family that's awesome and we're so supportive over it this is not a one size fits all type of life for sure but yeah and we need we certainly need people to work those jobs that mm -hmm. frankly a lot of us won't work or are not willing to work we we need police officers yeah. um, I, we have we will bleed blue till the day we die Mm -hmm. um, there, there needs to be people who are not wrapped up in business or needs to be professionals out there. Um, and we have a lot of respect for that, but we're yeah. just, we're taking a little bit of a different route and, 
Um, Hopefully this can inspire someone. Yeah. But if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, and subscribe. We have our first video was about our barn dominium, so if you want to watch that, you can go to my channel. But we really hope you liked this video, and we'll be back next week yeah. for another video. Thank you.